Okay, are you ready for more show? Yeah. Here's a funny guy. Put your hands together, Mr. James Galvin! So how's everyone doing tonight? Yeah. You see, that's the way you answer that question at a club or at a concert, right? right. Tomorrow, you want to have some fun? Answer that question like you did tonight. You pass by the boss in the hallway, he gives you a, hey, how you doing? And you just go, woo! <laughs> Phone rings, Bring. Hello? Jimmy, it's Grandma. Oh, how you doing? Fuck yeah! Awesome! <laughs> So, um, my wife and I had a little open dialogue uh, not too long ago in which we came to a decision that I would have a vasectomy. <laughs> well, let's face it, the truth of the matter is, I've done been vasectomized, which would be a great plot line, I think, for a new TV show, Law and Order SBU, in the criminal justice system. Vasectomy-based offenses are considered especially heinous. The men who are coerced into this barbaric form of self-mutilation are members of an elite squad known as the Shooting Blanks Unit. <laughs> These are their stories. Dun dun. <laughs> So the doctor said to me, he said, I'd have no problem having an orgasm after surgery. And I really didn't think I'd be in the mood that quickly. <laughs> Nor did I think the nurses appreciated very much. <laughs> but actually, what he really said to me was, he said, I have no problem achieving orgasm. If orgasm is an achievement, then my guidance counselor was way wrong. <laughs> I'm a tremendous overachiever. <laughs> so, but now that orgasm is an achievement, I've started taking credit for it. I added it to my resume. Education, state college, 1988 to 1992. Achievements, orgasm, 1985 to present. <laughs> All right, 83. <laughs> you know those um, in your college alumni journal you can write in and brag about how wonderful your life is well I made a submission James Galvin class of 92 is married with two beautiful children he has a great job in Manhattan he volunteers in a soup kitchen on weekends and he comes twice a day <laughs> my daughter came home from school the other day and she said, and she's six years old, and she said, Dad, Connor says that Hannah Montana is sexy. <laughs> and it took me a second to realize she meant sexy. And now I had to explain sexy to my six-year-old. So I sat her down and I said, Honey, I think what Connor meant to say is that he wants to fuck Hannah Montana. <laughs> I can't blame her for getting it wrong, though, because we were, when we were kids, we got words wrong, too. Like cursing. We didn't know how to curse. We'd say things like, you know, what the shit is this dick? <laughs> or we'd make up words like, that is just so tittish. <laughs> Song lyrics, we got those wrong, too. Ever, everyone, everyone remembers uh, Pink Floyd, The Wall? No dark sarcasm in the classroom. Teacher, leave them kids alone. That really spoke to us because we thought they said, no Dukes of Hazard in the classroom. <laughs> and man, were we pissed. We were like, why is there no Dukes of Hazard in the classroom? Oh, we were, you know, and this Floyd guy, we were like, man, he's got it right. He tells those teachers, leave them kids alone. The whole thing, even now I talk about it, I just feel so, so fucky. <laughs> I love Canadian sports teams, 
but they've got the worst named teams in sports. American teams have got it right. They go with big, strong names like the Vikings, the Rams, and the Lions. But then American teams went biblical and got a little off track. The Los Angeles Angels. If you translate the Los Angeles Angels into English, it means the, the Angels Angels. <laughs> it's like the work of a stuttering priest. <laughs> the New Jersey Devils, because nothing goes better on ice than a guy with a flaming pitchfork. <laughs> but far and away, Canadian teams, especially Toronto, have got the worst names. In basketball, we've got the Raptors. Ferocious, but extinct. <laughs> In baseball, the Blue Jays. Have you ever seen a Blue Jay try to catch a fastball? They explode. <laughs> but far and away the worst is my favorite, the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, pretty much the least intimidating thing on the planet. It got me thinking, what names did they reject before they got to Maple Leafs? <laughs> All right, guys, here's the choices. The finalists are the Down Comforters, <laughs> the Teddy Bears, the Plastic Spoons, and the Maple Leaves. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, total. No question, Maple Leaves crushes the rest of those. But we can go more badass than that. You know what? Not Maple Leaves. Fuck the grammar. Maple Leafs. <laughs> But the toughest part of being a Leafs fan is it's very hard to talk smack. I'm at a Devils game, and there's a fan there, and he's just doing the whole devil theme and riding me. You're in hell! We're burning you in hell! We're gonna make a Leafs bonfire! And you know, my first response was not all that strong. I came out with, yeah, man, well, we're gonna like photosynthesize your ass. <laughs> and that didn't shut him up. But then it hit me. I got up, I pointed right at him, and I said, all right, man, first, we're going to turn really pretty colors. And then we're going to fall gently out of the trees and cover your property. And then your wife is going to send you outside to blow us. <laughs> hey, guys, it's time for me to leave. Thank you so much.